be going to get the recording turned on for you beautiful people right now. Um, kind of a big day ahead of us. So today is actually Mentorship Monday. And I know that there are a lot of you here for the first time. And there's some of you here who have been here before. So Mentorship Monday to give you an idea of what this is for those who are here to make it live. Every single Monday, we have a Mentorship Monday. The first Monday, the first trading Monday of every month. So this particular month, as you guys know, the first Monday of the month, the market was closed because it was a, uh, a New Year's holiday. So this is the first trading Monday of the month. And we do have Men Mentorship Monday every single month. And really kind of spurred off when we started getting some new traders who were brand new to real life trading, have never heard of me before, and they just joined the trading room. They're like, hey, what do you mean when you say this? What, what do you mean when you say that? What's, the, what's this? What's that? And there's just a lot of beginning questions, which is fine. I love questions. I love teaching. But some of the traders who, you know, come in here all the time and what we, we, we do our jobs and, <laughs> you know, it's very, very methodical and business-like. Um, we were like, well, how about we create a day just for questions like that, just for beginning traders, just for traders new to real life trading, uh, a day where anyone can ask any question about anything, and I will take my time to answer it, and then the rest of the the rest of the month we're just going hammer, uh, and we're trading like champions. So that's kind of how Mentorship Monday got created. So we will be going, or at least I'll be going much slower today than normal. Um, type in a one to, to test out that chat pane to make sure that you guys know where to, where to access it, where to see it. Uh, it's free to use. The chat pane doesn't cost you text messaging rates or anything. So make sure to try it out. Um, I will say that there's a little button when you test the chat pane. Uh, it goes from either everyone or all panelists. So make sure if you want everyone to see your comment, make sure that little blue button says to everyone rather than to all panelists. Otherwise only I will be able to see it. So just throwing that out there. All right. Wonderful. There we go. Some beautiful stuff. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. So what are we going to be talking about today? What is today about? What are we doing? Well, uh, it is uh, 904 Eastern, 804 Centur uh, Central, 604 Pacific, and 405 Hawaii time, which is where I'm at right now. I'm in Hawaii, so it's early. It is very early, <laughs> but I like it. I dig it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about day trading. Um, we're going to talk about trader psychology. We're going to talk about risk management. We're going to talk a lot about a lot of things today. But before we do any and all of that, we're going to start looking for some trades and getting ready to rock out. That's pretty much what we got. Mr. Eric Pope says, hey, it's 7.05 here in Arizona. I, I, did, I did skip mountain time. <laughs> Brad, thanks for, uh, thanks for helping with the chat, pain, man. I appreciate that. Brad, I was unable to type that question in for Gray W. He says, how do I see everyone else in the chat room? So you can see everyone who's making comments, right? You're on I think you're unable in, in this particular webinar format um, to see each person's name before they type, but once they type something in, you'll be able to see who is all here. Steven says, morning, Jeremy. Thanks for getting up so early. Yeah, man. I'm ready to trade. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to be talking about day trading, obviously, this morning. Uh, what we're going to be discussing is really the steps of what I do uh, and what we do is real life traders every single day to find certain day trades that we're looking for. I'm going to give you and show you certain sites that we use, um, certain processes, and I'm here to answer questions. So again, if you are new to this environment, please ask questions. I'm happy to help you myself. I got Brad Reed. We have a few incredible traders like Maria. You just saw Maria type in. Good morning. She's from Toronto. We always talk about Maria. Um, she's been with us like Justin Linderman um, and many other traders since day one and just some incredible people um, who trade full time are here in the chat band. So if you guys have any questions, myself, Brad, and a lot of other traders are going to be here to help you with those. So let's get started. Um, something that you'll know about me is I do the same type thing, same thing, 
same thing at the same time every day. So you can see my computer screen says 4.07 a.m. Um, at 9.20 Eastern time is when I'm going to be looking at the SPY, the Qs, um, Netflix, Tesla, Apple, Google. I'll be looking at some of the optionable trades, right? 9.20 Eastern. So between now and then, what I'm going to do is we're going to go over uh, some stocks. Now, again, today's going to be massively slower than it's going to be tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Um, but still, this week is going to be designed to help traders who are brand new to real life trading kind of get the understanding the concept of what we're doing. So let's go look at some trades. I'm going to pull up some websites. There are a few websites that you can use. Um, some of them you're very familiar with, right? You can even use Yahoo Finance um, to find out uh, some stocks that are moving before the market is open. So what we are looking at today, what we're looking for is, I usually write the word gaps when I'm saying this, but what, what we're going to look for today is something called sentiment. <laughs> sentiment. And let me just explain what that, that word is. Really what we're looking for uh, is we're looking for emotions. We're looking for people to really think something and try to figure out exactly what they are trying and what they're feeling and what they're thinking. And the best way to do that oftentimes is with gaps because gaps equal direction. So you can kind of write that little four word thing down if you want because that's what we're looking for every single day is we're looking for sentiment. Sentiment equals emotion. Um, what people are feeling and how they're feeling is often identified through gaps and gaps usually is going to equal the direction of the trade because when you're day trading, there are literally millions of things that you can do every single day. You have millions of choices, millions of opportunities, millions of stocks, millions of trades, millions of strategies. So how do we possibly narrow down everything that we need in order to accomplish what it is that we're looking for? I think that's a very, very valid question, right? How do we narrow it down? So one way is just simply by doing just so, finding something that eliminates the vast majority of stocks out there. So usually when you look for gaps, that will eliminate a lot of the stocks out there. We'll talk about what kind of gaps to look for, how to trade them, and all that kind of good stuff. So sometimes you can just come on Yahoo Finance. Um, now, again, not all the time, but some of the time. And you can read some of the um, news. And just kind of see, if, like, so it's right here it says McDonald's sells its China to business. It's business to China. <laughs> so you can click on McDonald's, hop over here and just see if it's doing anything. So you're going to pull up McDonald's and you're going to look at the chart. Now, this uh, charting software by now, I think you all are aware that I use something called TradingView. Um, you can't see it. I have another computer up over here that I'm also going to be using for uh, the actual trade placements. Um, but you can use scanners in your broker. You can use scanners for anything, really. Uh, but looking for gaps, you'll notice that McDonald's is only moving 27 cents. So that's not a lot. Not a lot, 27 cents, very, very little gap. Usually the, the amount of gaps that we look for in the room are between 3 and 12%. That's kind of like the, the bread and butter, that 3 and 12%. Anything less than 3% is something that I refer to as a micro gap. And micro gaps actually are very powerful, uh, but they're very hard to find. And they're, they're very hard to track because there's so many of them. Uh, micro gaps happen very often, and they fill a high percentage of the time. So the easiest way to trade micro gaps is to have that stock on your list all the time, right? So if you are always, 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 um, trading, let's say Apple or Microsoft or Under Armour every single day, you're easily able to identify and trade the micro gaps. But for our day trading purposes, three to twelve percent is the range that we're looking for. That three to twelve percent will get people out of bed early. That will, you know, cause a stir in their emotions. That will make them feel something, and that will cause a direction in the gap in the stock. So that's usually what we look for. So this is the website that a lot of traders have become accustomed to, uh, to just scan. And I'll put that in the chat pane for everybody. Um, you'll also notice that there are already some traders who are posting some of the stocks that they're looking at this morning. So just kind of FYI. And for those of you um, 
who do decide to join Real Life Trading, we do have a, uh, a Slack communication device that we all trade with and chat through. So this is kind of like our social media platform, our social media tool. So we post a lot of trades in here, answer a lot of questions, help a lot of traders out, um, post a lot of charts, analysis, you know, Mondays through Mondays, we're here chatting with everybody. So that's going to be something that you can also get access to. Um, but anyway, here is the pre-market watch list, stockmarketwatch.com. And you have gap downs and you have gap ups. So gap downs on the right, gap ups are on the left. And really what I do is I just go through them really quickly and see if I, if I, can, if I know any of these companies. So for an example, uh, I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. I'm just going through companies that I actually know first. I've heard of Five Below, and I've heard of Urban Outfitters. So these are the two that I've actually heard of on this list. Now again, it just depends on how much time you have. Um, I usually do wake up when when I'm not on the floor, when I'm not trading with you guys. I usually do wake up about 20 minutes before market opens, uh, approximately, and just go through really quick the list of stocks I'm looking at and. Uh, just kind of run through, you know, so that's kind of like the time frame. If you want to wake up earlier, you're more than welcome to, of course. But uh, yeah, you can hop over here and pull some up. So let's go look at Five Below. Five Below is a stock that, you know, uh, it's like the retail chain, department stores, it's in a few malls, things like that. So what I first do is I start with the daily chart. And the daily chart is going to just help me understand um, the direction of the stock. So you'll notice the stock right now is gapping down $37.40. Type in a one if you can see that. Rob says, can you post the chat link? Thanks. Yes, sir, I did. Just scroll up uh, if you get a chance, about three inches, and you'll see that link, my good friend. If you need it again, let me know. I will actually, I'll just resend it to you directly. Uh, let me go, Rob. Where are you, Rob? There you are. So Rob, I know you're just asking, um, so make sure everyone else has it because <laughs> you're an awesome guy. Uh, but there you go. It's, I just posted it to you. All right, so that's again, that's uh, you got a lot of people are typing in one. So that's how you kind of kind of see where the stock is gapping. Now, this is the part that is uh, where you're going to get a lot of differences. When the gap is actually happening, there's a lot of difference of opinion on what to do with this gap, right? The gap finding is easy. The trading of the gap is the hard part. So I've tried to make gaps uh, as easy as possible through a lot of research and a lot of practice. And what I have found, and I know a lot of you are very familiar with my gap strategy at this point, but for those who are new, what I have found is that there's really only four main types of gaps. And the two that are most common are retest gaps. So what a retest gap is, is a gap that works on filling the gap quickly. Those are, those are the most common types of gaps. So you have gap downs that do it and you have gap ups that do it. This is a gap down that's gonna do it. So it's a black candle gapping down. So you'll notice, right, that this particular market is not even open yet. We got 15 minutes before the market opened. So obviously I have no idea what candle color today is going to be on five below. But the fact that we can see it's a black candle gapping down, that helps us understand that it, it is in fact a retest gap. So what does a retest gap mean? It means that we're gonna open here, all the short sellers who got in yesterday, the stock's gonna gap down, and how are they gonna exit their position? They're going to buy to cover. That buying to cover is gonna cause this kind of action in the price, and hopefully we're going to get this kind of action later, right? Are we going to get that exactly? Maybe, maybe not. But that's really what we look for every single day. In fact, if you ever want to print out um, a, what's called a wave rotation, this is exactly the kind of movement in the stock that we look for every single day for bullish trades and bearish trades. So you'll see the bearish trade is below. We look forward to trade down, trade up, and then roll over. And the bullish trade, we look forward to trade higher trade lower, and then bounce. So those are the two kind of wave rotations and kind of looks that we check out all the time, every single day. And what most traders say is right here, how do you know when it's going to roll over? And the answer is you never do. <laughs> you just take the same trade every single day, 
uh, uh, using candlesticks and moving averages, those things can absolutely help your decision making. And you'll see plenty of examples today of me determining if that if we're actually going to see that rollover or not. So on five below, we have a black candle gapping down. Now here's what's interesting. I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit. Usually I zoom out about a year worth of data. And I try to find out where the stock is and where it's gapping to. You'll notice that FIVE uh, is kind of gapping into a little bit of a support zone. So we have a support right here, which is about 36 and some change. And that's going to be kind of the strongest support. We also have one right here at about 37.50. And that's approximately where we're gapping to. So you have to find the gap and you have to find the location that you're gapping to. So five below, black candle, gapping down into support, is likely gonna bounce pretty nicely. So for my bullish traders out there, this is actually one that you'd look for to potentially buy the dip, right? Black stock, black candle, I'm sorry, not black stock, black candle gapping into a strong support. You're saying to yourself, okay, it's probably a retest gap. I'm gonna let it retest, so I'm gonna to look to buy at the support level. So this is gonna be one we're gonna keep our eyes on. I'm gonna draw some support resistance just so that I have them on my screen. Uh, I'm gonna draw one here, which is again about 36.04, and I'm gonna draw one right here, which is 37.54. And those prices I've determined based on two pivots. I'm using this candle right here, and I use this pivot right there uh, to draw those lines. And it just so happens it kind of coincides very nicely with the short-term resistance and support on five below. So I use about a year's worth of data to find my support and resistance and determine if the stock is opening above or below some support and resistance. And again, if it's opening right out of support, um, I'm not in love with this gap, right? It's not amazing. Um, type in a three if you can understand and see if the gap was opening here in the red square, or technically rectangle, that would be a stronger gap. Type in a three if that makes sense. Now just says zoom into the charts, can't really see the candles. Um, trying to think if it's, if there's an, uh, I believe if you have zoom, you're able to maximize the screen on your end. But as of right now, I think this is about as big as I can get my screen. But the good news is a lot of you guys are giving me threes. So in the threes, you're understanding how that would be a stronger gap. It was opening in that red box, that red uh, rectangle. So since it's opening here in this, uh, I don't know, let's, let's make it a black box. Since it's opening down here in this black box, uh, approximately, eh, it's going to be all right. I'm actually, and I'm probably going to write a note down that I really do anticipate this to be what's called, um, in most terms, a fade. One... 917 likely a fade bull traders watch this one i'll be patient on the bearish rollover okay so what's that called ladies and gentlemen that's called my trading plan there we go all right so it's 420 hawaii time 920 eastern let's go look at uh the broader markets which is what i do every single day that i'm on the mic um, and I kind of analyze and expect what the, the broad markets are going to do. So you'll notice on Friday, uh, on Friday, I wrote down this note, expecting a small rest retest on Monday and likely a pop higher on Tuesday. Uh, how do I know that? Well, we had four white candles in a row, four bullish candles in a row on the SPY. So with those four candles in a row, my thought process is, um that likely here it is here's the four white candles um you have a strong move that happened last week right a breakout of resistance so i'm expecting that the spy is going to pull back a little bit and then bounce higher now is that going to happen maybe maybe not but this pullback is going to be happening today we can already see that we're down 0.16 percent not a lot but we're down enough that's i'm expecting that pullback to occur so again, notice that amount of candles that we're looking at. That's going to be the key. That's something that a lot of traders um, need to get really, really good at is timing the markets. And oftentimes in timing the market, what you have to realize is 
right when you think it's a great time to get into a trade, you need to understand how far the trade has already moved. You know, so if the stock is doing this, it's a terrible time to buy right there. A lot of a lot of uh, companies call that the breakout, but the breakout is usually when the stock is already in a trend and it just confirms the trend after a new day. So for example, this right here, that black arrow, that's a breakout. A lot of people wouldn't consider that a breakout, but it is because that's, you get a gap right there. The trend is already occurring, it's already moving, and that is where you wanna get in bullish. Not right here, right? You don't wanna get in bullish up here, you wanna get in bullish when the uh, actual bounce, the actual move happens. So for example, back here on Tuesday, that was a bullish move, that's when you wanna get in, not today. All right, today, not really the time, uh, well, not today, Friday. Friday's not really the time you wanna get in bullish on the SPY because you've already had four white candles in a row, you've already had a pretty big move, about three points on the SPY. So now here's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this retest today, maybe even tomorrow, and a continuation higher. So for those who are there, for those who are uh, for there for those who are here right now, and for those who are here all of this week, you'll be able to see our analysis um, every single day of the broader markets, um, and kind of see us talk about what we expect is going to happen. Uh, I don't have any option trades open right now. Usually I do, um, especially on Fridays. So this Friday we're going to be trading options together. So today, specifically right now. Uh, I don't have any options open. Uh, I rarely, that's rarely the case, but the market's not really moving that much today. So Lad, uh, did Brad get a chance to answer your question about what is a fade? So a fade is when a stock uh, fills the gap and trades in the opposite direction of the gap. So for example, on Apple, you have four white candles in a row on Apple, okay? Right now, it's up about 28 cents or 0.21%. So it's a very, very small gap. But let's hypothetically state that the candle, uh, that, that Apple was opening in this black box. If Apple was opening in this black box, what would happen? What would happen, lad? What do you think? So that gap would likely fade, meaning it would trade lower and then bounce. That's something I call a retest gap. Now, how would we know that that would happen, ladies and gentlemen? How do we know that? Well, we would have an idea. It doesn't have to happen for sure, but it's a very high probability that would happen if that, if that was the case on Apple because you have four white candles in a row and with the stock gapping up to that resistance, what would people who have bought in the last four days, what, what would they do? People who bought in the last four days would likely sell, yeah. They would lock in a profit. So that selling would cause the market to trade down and then the um, buyers would come in. That would be the retest of old resistance, new support, and that would be the buying location. So Apple today, uh, the high of Friday was 118.16. So it does appear that we're actually barely, barely gapping up above that. Looks like a nice bearish gap, but it's gapping into a resistance and uh, will continue higher. So there's a few people telling me that GPN is going to be a good example of a fade possible. So here's GPN. And GPN, you have four white candles in a row. It's gapping up to 79.76, which is it's gapping into a resistance. So this is one that could fade. And again, fade means uh, likely that it's going to trade in the opposite direction of the gap. So it's probably going to trade down. So we'll put GPN on our list. Uh, I was just looking at Apple. Let's hop over to Netflix. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit for you guys, okay? So you can get a taste of how this, how fast we sometimes move. So this is Netflix on the daily chart. And you'll notice that we have a black candle on Friday. So Netflix right now, uh, shockingly, actually is not very, it's not gapping up very much. It's at 131.07. Looks like my line somehow disappeared on Netflix. That's not good. Um, I can always draw some more. So if Netflix was opening right here, today which it's not but let's say it was opening in this general area ladies and gentlemen would that be a bullish gap or would that be a bearish gap oh there's my lines wow that took forever and a day would that be a bullish gap or would that be a bearish gap if we open here in that red box 
Venkata says bullish. Anyone else? Only one person? All right. Well, the answer is yes, it is bullish. Why would it be a bullish gap? Well, because the candle that we got on Friday is a bearish high wave candle at a resistance. And the fact that we'd be gapping up above that, anyone who went in bearish on Friday would be trapped, therefore forcing themselves to buy to cover. And that buying pressure would come in and the trade would continue higher. So that would be a bullish gap. What if Netflix was gapping uh, right here in the red circle or the red, not the, obviously not a circle, the red triangle, not a triangle either, the red rectangle, that would be a bearish gap, exactly. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Okay, so there's Netflix, not really gapping anywhere uh, spe special. Here's Amazon, so it just absolutely crushed Amazon last week. You have two really big white candles right now. We are up a dollar. The high of Friday was 179.44. Um, two big white candles in a row. I'm expecting this to occur on Amazon. Why am I expecting that to happen? Because we've already got a really, really big move that came in. So I'm just gonna wait on Amazon. I don't see anything right now that I'm gonna be trading. So right now I'm looking at the broader market and anything to trade with options. Google had a big trade I missed on Google on Friday just by pennies. Uh, I don't see anything gapping on that one that looks interesting. Tesla, these are stocks I look at every single day uh, for me and my trading personally. Um, I do have a wager on Tesla. I know you guys are familiar with my wagers by now. So I've got a good wager on Tesla. I'm going to have to eat an unpeeled banana <laughs> if Tesla breaks 210 by earnings. So I've got a wager on Tesla, uh, but no real gap that's exciting. So pretty much today looks like a great day to have Mentorship Monday because there's not a lot that's happening. There's not a lot going on. Christopher said, I've done that. I thought I was dying. Eating an unpeeled banana? Oh, man. Oh, I'm not excited about it then. Not pumped. All right, so the market opens in about 60 seconds. So what we're gonna do, um, to, again, the very first 30 minutes of today's market is I wanna answer any questions that you guys have, okay? So I know usually you're gonna feel like, hey, Jeremy, what's going on, man? How come we're not making money? I've set aside today and this morning specifically to be an instructor to help my traders, help everyone from around the world really focus in and, and make sure you guys are understanding what we're looking for, okay? So I know no other trading room does that, and it's okay. Real life trading is better than everybody else. So let's just keep that in mind. Let's just focus in, and I'm here to help you beautiful people trade profitably this week, this month, and this year. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, geez. Mikey's in the building. That's exciting. Carrie says, thanks for the invite. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. All right, so let's go ahead and just hop over here to five below. This is the gap that we were looking at earlier today. And you'll, you'll notice that we did open right on a support zone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop in here to the five minute chart. This is actually one of my, one of my predominant time frames for day trading. And you'll notice on the five minute chart, what I'm about to do is turn what's called extended hours on. So extended hours, you'll see in this yellow uh, little mark right here, that this is actually kind of the um, the data that was occurring before the market actually opened. So you'll notice uh, that again, let's just practice this for a second. I'm not taking this trade so that everyone is aware. I'm very, very clear. We're all very clear. Anytime we are going to be taking a trade with live money, that's an, it's called an official trade. We're very, very clear on that. But I'm going to do something with all of you here because, again, there's a lot of you here who are brand new to trading and real-life trading. Tell me, with an, with an R of 150, how many shares would you buy on this trade? With an R of 150, how many shares would you buy on this trade? Linderman says, enrichment week, so pumped. Me too. Me too, man. I'm jazzed doing it. So what do you guys think? How many shares would we record with a $150 R? Mikey's giving me a number. I've only gotten one number so far. Okay, well, let's practice it. So what we're going to do in this case is what we trade and what we focus on in real life trading more than anything else is risk management, ladies and gentlemen. And that is because it's not about how much money you can make in trading. It's about how much money you can lose. All right. Everyone in the world knows that you can make money trading the market. We get that. 
We all get it. I'm worried about how much money you can lose on a trade, not how much money you can make. So in this situation, you take your entry, 3799, and you subtract your stop by 3717. So $37.99 minus $37.17 equals 82 cents. Then you take your risk, 150, and you divide it by 82 cents, and you're gonna come up with 182 shares. All right, that's how many shares you would have bought at $37.99. And what that does is it helps you understand how much money you can lose on this trade, which would be 150 bucks. So as long as you can control your risk, you have an idea of how much money you can make, because that's the key. Right, it's all about risk, ladies and gentlemen. Don't lose a lot of money, especially while you're learning. And this is a statistic that I give a lot of people, and some people want to hear it, some people don't, but it's my personal opinion. If you can go two years and you can trade the markets live and not lose any money, so let's say you break even over the course of two years, I would call that an incredible success. I would call that a great success if you can trade two entire years live and not blow out your account. I know a lot of you are thinking, no way, Jeremy. If you're trading two years and not making money, you're an idiot. I, I would disagree with you. I would disagree. I would say what other place in life can you go there two years, get an incredible education, and do it for free uh, at any age? It's going to be hard to find. You know? Unless you get a scholarship to college, or if you you know if you have a GI bill, you worked pretty hard for that. <laughs> you know, it's not free. Freedom isn't free, kind of thing. So if you're going two years in the market and you're learning a lot of information and you're not losing any money, that is a huge accomplishment, my friends. Because what most traders like me in the first two years, they blow out their entire account. They lose a lot of money. Right. So don't lose a lot of money. Learn how to trade. And you'll make that happen. So let's just see, let's talk about this analysis now. Uh, let's say you're not in this trade at all. Let's say that oh, I, I'm not in this trade. I'm missing it. Okay, I'm not making any money on this trade. Now you would have, right? You would be up already over $150 if you had taken this trade. But it's it's okay. I'm not in it. So let's talk about this for just a second. If you were not in this trade, how could you get in? You could do what's called a limit buy. A limit buy. So for some reason, a lot of trading rooms, especially a lot of day trading rooms, do market orders. They always do market orders. Have you guys ever seen that before? A lot of trading rooms do market orders, which is mind boggling to me because if you're doing a market order, you're going to get hosed on your entries. I mean, you're going to get absolutely like bulldozed. First of all, five below has about like an eight cent spread right now. It was about 20 cents about three minutes ago. Um, so the bid ask spread is really, really wide, number one. And number two, uh, doing a market order, you, you never know what price you're gonna get filled at, and it's just really, really hard to control your exact entry. If you did a limit buy at $37.99, let me show you the kind of wave rotation that you'd be looking for. You'd be looking for something like this. Isn't That's exactly what I drew just a few moments ago. Right, that wave rotation is what bullish traders, what you're going to be looking for and what you're going to be keeping your eyes on. So now let's go back over here to the daily chart. Let's remind ourselves what analysis that we what analysis we came up with this morning. Okay, so this morning on five below again, this is a great teaching example. Unfortunately, it actually works a little too well, and now you guys are think you guys probably think I'm a fortune teller. Um, I'm not that good on all gaps, I promise. <laughs> but exactly what I drew this morning, I said, hey guys, it's gonna gap down and it's likely gonna fade, bouncing off support, fill that gap and maybe roll over. I've been wondering if you guys heard me say that, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. Okay, so that's, I mean, with that analysis, that should like, that should make you almost scratch your head and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing, this stuff really works. I mean, it does, right? All, the only thing we did, I didn't use any indicators. I used no MACD, no Bollinger Bands, no Relative Strength Index, no Momentum Indicators, no Exponential or Simple Moving Averages. All I used is Support and Resistance. That's what, right, that's all I use. Support and Resistance and what? The Gap Sentiment, the Gap Type. Those are the only two things I use, folks. 
if your trading is simple, honestly, on this particular trade, if I was trading by myself, I could have taken this trade already. I would have made money and I'd have been done in the first seven minutes of the day. I could have been done. That would have been my one. I could have just taken this one trade, you know, at a little bit, a little bit tighter than this setup, but I would have made about an R where I've at least locked in some gains and I could have been done for the day. All based on support and resistance and gaps. Simple. Very, very simple. If you keep your trading simple, you can do it quickly. And if you do it quickly, you can leverage your time better, especially for those who work full time jobs or you have kids. You got to wake up early. You got to do things, right? You got, you got objectives you got to take care of. Obviously, you know the benefits of trading quickly. I don't have to go into that. I was stupid. <laughs> you, you guys all know what you could do if you can make money in seven minutes. All right, I don't have to talk about that. All right, so anyway, that's five below. That's just the first example of the day. So my buddy Mikey, who's in Australia, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's really late for him right now. Is that right? I think you're about to go to street, uh, go to sleep. So here's uh, <laughs> here's Facebook. So let's go over here on the daily chart, and I'm gonna get this pulled up on Facebook. Um, and this is in just a few quick seconds. Let's see if it's going to load. Sometimes trading view goes a little slow for me. Um, so here's the daily chart on Facebook. So ladies and gentlemen, let's ask this question. It's going to be a yes or no question. Yes or no. Would this be a good breakout to take on Facebook? Something I talked about just a few moments ago, actually. So I'm getting a lot of answers on this one. So thank you for answering. But everyone is saying no. I like that answer. I think that's the correct answer. Now, <laughs> I want just the people who, who answered no. All right, Just the people who typed in, have you taken that trade before as a breakout? <laughs> I have, Guys, I have for sure, right? I, I totally have done it. You know, years ago when I was new at trading, I was like, oh, yes, it's finally breaking out. Now this is it. And you get into this trade and, you know, you've already missed it. The time to take the trade was back here at the blue arrow. That was the time to get into the trade. Buy low, sell high. Buy it, support, sell it, resistance. So a breakout, so when, when people talk about breakouts um, and they talk about their strategies and when they get into a trade, things like that. Uh, I don't know. I just personally feel that a lot of companies really do a terrible job at explaining the breakout. And that's just my opinion, of course. But breaking out is really all about timing. It's all about looking at the candles and seeing who is making money, who is losing money, who's trapped, who's not trapped, uh, that type of thing. So in Facebook, in this example, I do agree that this general area, you're probably looking for actually a short trade of some kind. You're looking for a short trade of some kind here on Facebook, right? You're looking at a resistance. It's right now, you remember the buy low, sell high? That, that's trading 101, right? Buy low, sell high. Well, let's invert that saying. Let's talk about sell high, buy low. Is that a strategy? And the answer is of course. Of course it's a strategy. Sell high, buy low. So let's go in here on a five minute chart. And let's see if there's any kind of bearish setup so far on Facebook, right? Let's go look at it. So what we're doing is we're looking at the five minute chart and we're looking at kind of this pre-market data. Uh, pre-market data, I don't see much. Let me hop over here to the hourly chart. So, and just looking at this candle, so here is the, this is the hourly time frame. So anytime you're doing a channel play, right? A buy low, sell high, or you know, sell high, buy low. I look at the hourly time frame. After I look at the daily, so I go daily and I go to hourly. I look at the hourly and I try to determine where is the support and resistance. All right, where's the support and resistance on the hourly? So I know this is a lot of data right here that we see in front of us, but I could draw some support resistances. I could draw one right here. I could draw one right here. So these are the two resistances that I would draw on Facebook. Obviously, I could draw some supports as well. I'll go ahead and draw those for you. And yes, I am going very slow right now. If you're like, man, this guy's taking forever to explain simple concepts. That's okay. All right, so here's your support resistance. 
So if you're looking at getting in bearish on Facebook, uh, if you got in bearish up here somewhere, you know, you could have an idea of where your stop could be placed, right? If you're getting bearish, you could have a stop uh, up, I don't know, I drew that badly, but, but you know, somewhere up here, you could have a stop. If you're doing it as a swing trade, if you're doing it as a swing trade. If you're doing it as a day trade, um, let's, at, let's answer this question. Is there any gap today on Facebook that would indicate a good bearish day trade possibility? Was there any gap today on Facebook that would indicate a good bearish trade setup? I like Carrie's answer. Carrie says no. I would have to agree. I have to agree. In fact, let's come back to the five minute chart on Facebook and let's look at this on the five minute time frame. And what do you guys think? Does that look a little bit more bullish or bearish on the five minute chart? Looks a little bullish. Yeah, looks a little bullish on the five minute time frame. So if I was trading Facebook, how would I trade Facebook right now? Let's talk about it. Here's the five minute channel. Would I take a breakout or would I take a retest, ladies and gentlemen? What do you guys think? All right, you're all saying retest. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So you guys are getting that concept. That's a really, really big concept to understand folks and when in doubt if you never know when to take the breakout of the retest just take the retest <laughs> right when in doubt if you have no idea just take the retest because the worst case scenario you'll miss the trade and you won't lose money because in trading it's all about risk management and risk mitigation which means i would not take the trade right now on facebook bullish i'd wait for this and i look to buy that as it pulls lower so as it's retesting, right, as it's pulling back, this is when you start getting in bullish. And if, it, and if I miss the trade, if it never pulls back, then I don't get in. But it's never about missing the trade. It's about did you have enough patience to not take a trade that you didn't want to take. If you always let the market control you, you're going to get beaten up, battered, bruised, and you're going to blow out your account in months. Right? You let the market control you. You can never control the market, folks. That's like coming over here to Hawaii, getting in the ocean, and telling the waves to stop coming. It's not going to happen. So instead of take, telling the waves what not to do, if you want to go surf, go find a good wave and try to surf that wave. Rather than going against all the waves, you're going to have to go with the flow. Mike, you said you could still profit on the swing trade. Correct. You can still profit on the swing trade. Just the day trade itself doesn't look massively bearish, at least not yet. But the swing trade, you could still profit on the swing trade. Correct. You have a little bit more room when you're swing trading. You have more, uh, I'm trying to think of the exact term, but you have more abilities that to give the stock more room to actually rotate and roll over. Yeah. So, you know, a five-minute candle should never scare you out of a swing trade. <laughs> you know, so if you're shorting up here on Facebook, your stop is probably, like I mentioned, up here somewhere. So you can give yourself some room for some five-minute candles to do something like this, you know, and maybe roll back down, potentially. Okay. So that's Facebook. Um, I'm going to hop over here to Chevron because you're going to notice – that um, Dean Chance posted into the chat pane something that I know you guys can't see in the recording right now, but I'll kind of write this in. So this is something that uh, all trading rooms do this. Uh, I've been to all the trading rooms. Well, I shouldn't say all of them. Most trading rooms um, have people that write in trade setups. And the way we write it uh, is very similar to a lot of other rooms. So someone types in an entry and a stop. So this is just something, I think the word is nomenclature. If I'm saying that incorrectly, I apologize. I'm not very smart. When you're looking at a trade, it's very difficult to tell people what you're looking at quickly. The best way in the real life trading room that we like to signify what we're looking at is you type in the ticker, you type in a number, 
the X symbol and you type in the stop. So for you guys to get used to that, you're gonna see that a lot uh, at Real Life Trading, either in our Slack social media tool that we use or on our spreadsheet or on our, um, or in our chat pane. Any official trade that myself, Brad, or LaToya, any trade that we take, we're gonna type it into the, uh, into the chat pane. And when we do that, you guys know it's an official trade. That's how you know. So when we type it in, you know that's gonna be an official trade. So this is what that looks like. All right, so 115.73 by 116.05. So let's practice this really quick, and then we're gonna go into the five minute chart. With a $150 R, how many shares would you be shorting with this setup right here? Eric says, is that trigger with a stop? Correct. That's trigger and then the stop. So with the $150 R, how many shares would one short on this trade right here? So you're gonna take the difference of the two numbers, which is 116.05 minus 115.73, and you're gonna come up with a number. That number is called your stop size. So your stop size in this situation is 32 cents. Then you take 150 and you divide it by 32 cents and you're gonna come up with 468 shares. So if you round up to 469, that's fine. Uh, but it's gonna be 468 or 469. So if you're trading contracts, how many contracts would that be? Four or five, exactly. Lad says, so the only way you know whether it's a short or long is by which number is low and which number is high. Uh, it's whatever number is first. So if the first number is smaller than the second number, it's a short, and if the first number is higher, then the second number, it's long. So the second number is always the stop in the, in the nomenclature that we use. Yep, you got it. Like I said, but how do you put into Option Express the actual value of your stop? Uh, in Options Express, you have to find the actual um, option pricing chart. Um, has your boy Ricky shown you how to do that? He's a sort of. Tell him, to, tell him to step up his game. <laughs> tell him I told you. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop in here to the five-minute chart. And the five-minute chart on Chevron, um, well, first of all, let me actually come back over here on the daily chart. This is a black candle gapping down. So what type of gap is that? It's going to be called a retest gap. Yeah, retest gap. So what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for some kind of white candle to come in, um, waiting for some kind of retest. So here's the five minute chart. And on the five minute chart, this little white candle right here, the low of that candle is 115.75. 115.75, that's the low of that white candle. So you'll notice Dean po posted a uh, into the chat pane. He posted a trade set up 115.73 by 116.05. What was he doing? In that trade, what was he doing? He was waiting for that white candle right here that came in that formed in the market. He was waiting for that candle to break down, and he was shorting below that level. So that would have been a day trade, of course, yeah, because you're only looking at 25 cents, 30 cents of risk. That's definitely 100% a day trade. So on Chevron, on CVX, that's what he was looking for, is he was looking for this white candle to break down the stop above that white candle. That's simple. I mean, it really is in a way kind of that, <laughs> it is kind of that simple. So let's say that you're taking this trade, and obviously we can look at it right now, we can see that the trade has kind of moved. It's, it's already going in our favor a little bit. How would you set that trade up to get in after the fact? Something called a limit sell. You're gonna see that we'll do these all the time, limit buys and limit sells, because we never chase trades. We're not gonna chase trades, folks. We're too professional for that. Never chase a trade. I don't want you to chase trades. I don't want anyone to ever chase trades. If the trade doesn't do exactly what you want it to do, then don't trade it. So that means that Chevron, if it's breaking lower, 
115.73, if the stock does this, you'll get filled and then you're hoping for it to roll over. Is it weird that I haven't used any indicators yet? Is that strange? It should be strange, <laughs> right? The only indicators that I use are moving averages and I actually use those pretty rarely. Um, I use them definitely to let you guys be able to see what I'm looking at, but anytime that I'm taking a trade personally, I'm very, very rarely looking at moving averages. I'm just looking at candlesticks because that's really all you want to be looking at. Nate says, how do you feel about Amazon? Good day trade or swing trade? I like it better on a swing trade as it pulls back, Nate. I want Amazon to pull back more and it'll be a good buying the dip opportunity. Okay, so I'm gonna keep Chevron here and let's hop over here to five below. So five below, remember this is a trade that we're looking at bullish earlier today and shocking, right, that five below has traded up to this high of the day. Is that a crazy thing? Did it trade up to that pre-market high and it's kind of rolling over a little bit? I wouldn't call it that crazy. I'd say it makes sense. I'm five below. So we'll kind of see if that actually ends up doing anything. Um, I'm not going to trade this one bearish today at all. Not even almost. And there's two reasons why. Reason number one, the bullish volume is more than the bearish volume. Reason number two, you bounced cleanly off of this support. Those are the two reasons why I'm not going to take five below bearish. Could it work out bearish? Yes, it could. But you never want to trade with coulds and shoulds. You always want to trade with what did I expect this stock to do and what am I going to do with it, right? If you ever trade in the present, you're going to lose money. The only way you can trade profitably, in my opinion, is to create a plan for the future and then set that trade up based on the future price point. Okay. So this is a great time to ask, is there any other stocks that you guys are looking at? Um, FRO, what's FRO doing? Here's the daily chart on FRO. Uh, so FRO, ladies and gentlemen, a gap down to a support. What do you guys think? Yes or no? Did FRO gap down to a support? I'd argue, yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a support. There's a really good support here at 723. You got some support action around here at 707. Uh, I'd say the gap is okay, but you're absolutely correct. I feel like this one did gap down to a good support level and is bouncing. So it's definitely not trapping tons of folks. Right, it would have been a much, much better gap had it opened down here, and it didn't, so it's only okay. It's only okay. Um, PAYC, Paycom software, cute little gap. Very cute little gap, so I'm gonna put that on the list. Why do I say it's a cute little gap? Well, it's opening right above this resistance, right? Just barely clearing that resistance, it's an okay gap. We'll see. We'll see what it does. Uh, and NVIDIA, and he also is looking at NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, is this a bullish or is this a bearish trend? Is this a bullish or a bearish trend? This is bullish, yes, bullish. And um, if you're looking at playing this trade, you have a white candle gapping up. Uh, it's a retest gap, so here's the five minute chart. So you're getting a lot of white candles with a lot of good bullish volume on NVIDIA. Um, here's an hourly chart. So you're about to pull into some resistance right now at 107 and some change. So uh, for me on NVIDIA, I'll put that on the list for you, Neil, uh, and look for it to, so we've got a little bit of resistance here, and look for it to possibly break out, retest. And that will be the buying level that we'll look at on NVIDIA if we get that. If we get it. Uh, here's T-O-U-R. T-O-U-R. Here is the daily charts. And the daily charts. Um, volume is a little bit light on the stock uh, on average. Um, let's see. So you're trading up to a little bit of resistance right now at about $9.27. So you've already got a pretty good recent rotation here. 
So that you've seen that drawing before, uh, that same exact rotation. So that you got that kind of previously. So now on TOUR, you're trading into a little bit of resistance. Same thing as I just drew on NVIDIA. It's at a resistance right now. So if you're looking at playing it, you want to break out, retest, and this is where you buy that retest because um, it's already made that move. So that's all about timing because, yes, you could buy at the same price. You could buy here or you could buy here. But buying here now, you're probably going to be holding that trade for a month when you could have just get in a month later and not have to worry through the, uh, through the rest. Anil says, do you consider RSI at all? I do, uh, but RSI, I already have it in my head. I've used it so much. How to use RSI in real life. I got a really cool video on RSI if you want to check it out. So here you go, Anil. I'll let you uh, watch that video when you get the opportunity to. So yeah, I consider RSI, uh, but it's already in my head. I already know what it's going to look like. Uh, so that's, you know, I already know what it's going to look like. <laughs> so I don't really have to have it on the chart. I know if the stock is doing, you know, if the stock is doing this, RSI is going to be high. So some people play double bottoms with RSI, double tops with RSI, divergence. Carrie says, great explanation of wave rotation. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. Christopher said, do you ever touch commodity ETFs? Sure. Trade gold, silver, USO, XLE, trade ETFs all the time. Um, J Trader says, do you have the website or book on stock patterns and their probability to work out? Do you have the website or book? Um, that is, oh, I keep forgetting his name, Thomas Blowski. If you want to, if you want to nerd yourself, here's the guy right here. I mean that that website right here just looks like nerd city. <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. If you guys honestly, if you if you're a math person and you want the the math percentage historical explanation of what patterns do what hey go for it this is the guy to do it at right here tell him i sent you over i don't get anything for it but one day maybe but there you go j trader does that answer your question does that help um believe it or not ladies and gentlemen how crazy is that that was already an hour that was already one hour just went by kind of quick huh so what we're going to do for the remaining day is we're going to have this list and what we do at Real Life Trading better than any other company, one of, one of the things, we do many things better than everyone else, but one of the things we do is in the trading room, we don't focus on just ourselves. We don't focus on just ourselves. A lot of people, a lot of trading rooms, day trading, option, doesn't matter. They focus on themselves. They're like, hey, look how much money I'm making. Don't you want to be like me? Personally, what I prefer to do is I want to help you guys out. That's what I'm here for. That's why I built the company, why I did the website, why I make everything free. I'm more about the educational aspect of changing lives. I've seen how this can impact people and the benefits it can bring. So we put whatever stocks you guys are watching or trading in our watch list. So let's say someone is trading something and I'm not trading that at all. Uh, like J-U-N-G, that's what Christopher just mentioned. He said he's looking at J-Nug. I don't trade this stock at all. Why? I'm just because there's millions of other stocks to trade, and, you know, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so J-Nug, you know, um, I don't personally trade that one very often. But if Christopher's in a trade, I'm going to put it on the watch list, and I'm going to watch it for Christopher because if he's in, I'm going to keep him in as long as possible. And if I know he should get out, I want to help him uh, time his exits appropriately. J Trader said, do you do non-directional option trading? All the time. All the time. Sell puts, credit spreads, bull call spreads, bear call spreads, covered calls, always. Yep, yep, yep. We have a great trading journal that keeps track of all our trades. And you can see all of our results and everything like that. Um, yeah, pretty sweet stuff. Pretty, pretty cool. 
And Gregory says, will you buy five close close to mid-37? Looks like it wants to go there. Will I buy five close to mid-37? So here's the five-minute chart. So yeah, so kind of earlier, I mentioned uh, if you're looking at playing five below bullish, you would probably keep an eye out for a buying around, yeah, mid-37. Yep, so if you get a doji or some kind of bullish candle down around that area, Greg, if you're looking at playing five below bullish, that's where I would. In the general area, yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that's the first hour. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. What we're gonna do from here is we got two other hours gonna be coming to you later today uh, that's gonna be recorded for you to watch. I hope this first hour was helpful and beneficial for you in some way. Again, if you have any other questions, you can always email me, jeremy at reallifetrading.com. And always here to help our mission at Real Life Trading is to enrich lives. Thanks for watching the first video. I'm just going to stop the recording now.